Hey y'all, it is finally sunny and I've got lots of work to do today. So I am going into the garden and I'm going to fill you guys in on what's going on because it's been a while. So our first stop is going to be the greenhouse because this is, um, this is what I'm tackling today. All right, so here is the greenhouse. There's where I come in. It is packed. So what I'm going to be doing today is planting out as much of this as I can, anything that is cold hardy, um, that is ready to be potted up, it's actually just going out to the garden. Um, I've run out of seed starting trays, so I need to get more of those because this hodgepodge of uh, recycled materials, while it's temporarily functional, um, it, it doesn't work well for efficiency and just, um, being uniform just like across the board. So I have things started in milk jugs. I have things started in like that little plastic uh, food tray right there. That And so these different sizes and shapes of everything <clears throat> just tends to uh, kind of drive me nuts, honestly. And I, I don't know, it's just, once I get more seed starting trays, I can figure that out. So it's not a huge deal, but a lot of this stuff um, has to come out so that I can get ready to start more seeds. So like the things in this crate right here, I'll be planting those out today. I'll be planting probably both of those trays right there out. Um, got some yarrow in the corner back there that I'm gonna be planting out. And yeah, so lots to be done. If you follow along on Facebook or Instagram, you may have seen that um, I made the decision to cut some rows in with a tiller because either way, these rows have to be maintained. So I can attempt to plant them and just maintain those plantings and potentially get some more um, cut flowers uh, for that level of effort or I can leave them empty and still mow. So I've cut in three rows with a tiller on either side of my garden where my raised beds are. And these three rows that I've cut in on both sides I'm hoping to use them for cut flowers or native flowers, um, but I haven't decided about the whole weed fabric route. So that's on the to-do list, but I just, I don't have it all figured out yet. So I cut those in, I cut this little patch in right here in front of the greenhouse. And I'll take you real quickly over to this side over here. Um, there are three rows over here, but Archer um, is going to be working on trying to grow some pumpkins to sell at our farm stand. That's a project that he's been really adamant about, so I'm going to help him out with that. But we've got a short row for Archer's pumpkins right there. And then we've got two more rows over here. So I sort of went through with a hoe and mounded these up just a little bit. And that's why I've got water running down the sides of these rows. But having a higher row should help with the water runoff so my plants aren't just sitting in this water that you see on the side. So I think that's okay for now. Um, I'm primarily going to be the only person picking here. So <clears throat> if I was setting this up for something like a U pick, that would be an issue. But this space um, was not originally designed for U pick or 
a large group of people. So later down the line, if we decide to add an additional cutting garden, um, we will um, design that so that it's more easily accessible for groups of people. But for right now, this is just me sort of figuring, figuring it out for myself. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of the successions of what we've put in so far. So right here, I've got some Persian crests and this is supposedly a good um, greenery and filler for the bouquets that we're gonna be making. So that's a small section. This right here is actually parsley. And if you're looking for an herb that will thrive or at least survive in the cold, parsley, um, parsley can do that. I didn't cover this when we had that Arctic blast and it's still going. Over here, I've got stakes in this bed already for my support netting. And this is more crests. And on this end right here, we've got some group one snapdragons. So as these begin to come up a little bit, I'll go ahead and add the netting. Um, that is something that I've not gotten around to yet, but they're still fairly small. I think once it's consistently warm and they start to shoot up, um, I need to have that netting in place already. Here's another little patch that I've already planted out. I still have a few onions um, in place here. It's been really challenging uh, making the decision to pull out like some of my cabbages that were really tiny that I probably would have left if I didn't need the space or some of my garlic. But honestly, you guys, I have a gallon size freezer bag of garlic that's taking up a lot of space in our freezer and some of this stuff I just don't necessarily need more of. So while I enjoy growing the garlic and the process of the harvest, we don't we don't need any more of that. So when we go to design our kitchen garden that's gonna be closer to the house, that's something to think about. I've got some feverfew over here, some craspedia, and these are all plants that were started, you know, like probably two months ago. Um, some of the smaller ones were started more recently. And then this is actually some Crespedia from last year. I thought it died back with the Arctic blast and I actually threw it beside a trash can at the front of the garden. And I looked down one day and there was new growth on it. So I came, I just stuck it in this bed. This one might be dead for good. I don't see it doing much of anything, but yeah, that's exciting. We had one that made it, so that's not bad. I'm already starting to see the Bermuda grass come up in these beds, and it's just something that I'm going to have to manage because I don't think there's any getting rid of it. This next bed over, I've got some more filler started here, a variety of dills, and our daffodils oh I didn't even see this our daffodils are on their way so this is I mean that'll bloom before the end of the week I'm thinking these right here are actually from last year and I was trying to have more consistent beds so I moved some daffodils that were you know sort of like one and two here or there into this bed it's full of daffodils but some of the ones that I transplanted over from last year look like um, they're on the verge of blooming so that's pretty exciting and then these over here are some that I put in um, back in December I also see right down here This is blue globe thistle. And I only had a few of these planted. Um, 
so I figured it wasn't, you know, really worth it, but I've been watching um, a lot of videos pertaining to growing flowers, reading a lot of books, and now I'm kind of feeling like I want to have this somewhere um, in our in our selection of uh, cut flowers. So I need to find, I need to find a place for this. Uh, so I'll just sit that there for now. We'll stick it back in the ground. Y'all, this grass, oh, this grass. It's so persistent. It's already coming up. Alrighty, let's see what else we've got going. So as far as flowers right now, the daffodils are that's, that's what I'm expecting first. Daffodils and irises. Here's another bed of daffodils. I think I planted around three or 400 of these. Um, kind of dipping my toe into the water of large scale because in the grand scheme of things, as far as being consistent with sales, that's not really a whole lot at all. So we'll see how this first round goes. Um, what else? Our first round of bachelor button right here they're getting some size to them and I actually came through and just direct seeded some more so we've got plants at various um, stages of life here these larger ones will bloom first and as I cut those back then the smaller ones will receive more light and they'll start to come up I don't really have an exact spacing on this um, I might come through and pull some here and there if they don't seem to be getting any size to them but as for now I'm just going to sort of leave this as it is yep lots of ants our poppies that were supposed to be in the middle I really haven't had great success with and it gets warm here so fast that I don't think I'm really going to pursue poppies anymore there are a few over here on this side but I it's not enough for me to really do anything with so I need I need more volume than that and the same with bells of Ireland which is what we've got right here. I'm not going to pursue um, making those a success at this point. It's just too late in the season. But we'll use what we have and just sort of experiment with them. In the world of food, I still have some direct sown carrots here and there. Um, no, not that one. I saw some carrots here and there. Our thyme is looking great. I really need to come through and sort of cut out some of those dead branches from last year. But we also have our asparagus, our second year asparagus, sort of popping up out of the ground here. So I unfortunately need to leave this alone for now. But um, next year we should be able to start harvesting asparagus and it's a perennial so it should come back year after year for many many years this is one that's about to go to flower and then seed so they'll get big and sort of bushy looking this bed has some straw flower starts and then more carrots right here the carrots will come out probably sometime in April um, but I'm, I'm just gonna see how this companion planting sort of goes with a little bit of food here and there. I don't need, uh, I don't need enough carrots to store away necessarily. I love veggies and you know a lot of different things, Sullivan and I actually. But it, we, it's just we prefer to eat it fresh, and when it's in the can, we sort of throw it in here or there because we have it. But I think it'll be more sustainable for me to just focus on eating in season and not worrying about storing or canning a lot of things. I might still can some things, but not as much as I, um, not as much as I anticipated canning. So see a weed right here. Oh, I bet that's a tulip from last year. I didn't plant tulips this year, you guys. I I didn't have great luck with them, and the ones I did have, I wasn't really in love with, so I kind of scratched that off my list. 
This bed right here is sort of like my first big planting out. So I've got forget-me-nots right here up front, two varieties of those. I've got some stock right there, more stock on that side, and then blue Bupleurum, um, which is another filler over here on this side. And then I decided to leave some of my chives because this is something I pick from often. So all, all of this right here, chive, uh, chives. So this bed right here is looking pretty good. I've got a little bit of blank space right over there. So I might stick another small little, uh, group in that in that bed and then this is it I do have a blank space right over here but we did the uh, Hugo Coulter method with these beds and so the bottom half is full of logs that came from the trees that were you know here when we needed to clear a space for our yard and the house and stuff so right there there's a log that's like not at the bottom. It must be stacked on top of something else because you can see a piece of wood right there. So that's why that's bare space. Okay, this is a bed that overwintered and I was so certain this was straw flower and I was so completely wrong. This is actually Phlox and it is on the verge of blooming and so what I've been doing is coming in and just pinching this back because it's not tall enough for me to do anything with at this size so I just come through like right here it can branch these two spots and so I'm just gonna pinch off this top portion that would be on the way to making these little flowers that would be in the middle. So this is Phlox. Okay, take, take the egg inside. And I'm just sort of experimenting with this to see how it does. I do think that there are some straw flowers in here. Like I think this is straw flower, but um, yeah, it's a mixed bag. And I just kind of want to see what happens with this because if the straw flower can overwinter and if the Phlox can overwinter, then I can sort of establish some of those um, beds that, okay, Sullivan's putting eggs in my pocket. I can sort of establish some of those beds that I don't have to plant myself if they will readily reseed. Oops, don't drop it. Do you have more? That's it? No, Four? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Our eggs uh, are starting to come in more quickly now. I think we collected about eight yesterday, so almost up to a dozen a day. But yeah, so I'll keep you guys posted on this self seated bed. All right, more on food. Um, the back half of this bed is covered in fire ants. I direct seeded some lettuce. I'm not sure if that will come up or not. I cannot get rid of these ants. Um, they just hop from one space to the next. But I do have some arugula right here. I've got more chives and some green onion, some cilantro, and then some strawberries um, along the edge there. Yeah, lots of ants, Sully, be careful. And then this bed right here is another bed with just strawberries. Some of these are actually starting to flower already. Let's see. So we've got some flowering going on. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll add more food in this bed or if I will end up needing to use this for flowers. But right now, it's just got strawberries in it. Look, I gotta get out of the light. Look at this, this is our first calendula. It's beautiful. I think this is the zeolite variety. 
So if I were picking, um, this would this would be ready to pick. Even a little bit past ready to pick. This stem is very short. I'm going to, I'll pick this later um, just to encourage it to continue to flower and send out longer stems, but I think that's our first uh, bloom. This is our iris bed. It really doesn't look that much different. Um, we've got those long wiry green tops still. Um, some of our, I think these are the bearded irises have started to put on some greenery. And I have come through with sweet pea flowers for this trellis. So that's what we've got in the back here, trying to reach and not crack the, um, the egg Sullivan put in my pocket. And then there's chamomile behind the trellis and a couple more chamomile on the end here. I have not had great success with chamomile, but I think my timing has just been off. So I'm really excited to see if we get many more flowers this year than we have had in the past. Cause I've had a few here and there, but not a whole ton. Sully's little garden, y'all, he's growing. He's got sweet peas, um, which are all these big things that you see all over the place. He's got his carrots that he started. And what else? I came in and I put these green onions in for him because I needed to pull them out of my space to get some more flowers in a bed, but I didn't want them to get away. So I gave them to Sullivan and then he sprinkled some pansy seeds. Pansy or viola in here also, and they're coming up. So that's exciting for him. And hopefully it's encouraging to you that your seeds want to grow. That's what my, uh, one of my favorite vloggers always says. Alrighty, this is the last bed I'm gonna show you guys. And I have started in here with some yarrow. These are still small. Um, and I think I do have more that I'm gonna be planting out today. But I'm just showing you guys these for the sake of sort of keeping track as we go along. So I planted these out maybe a week ago. Um, they were started probably a month ago. These seem to take off fairly quickly. And um, I'll be filling this bed, at least half of it, with more yarrow. But this is what we're looking at now. Alrighty, you guys, this video was kind of quick, but I've got lots of planting to do. And um, I will be catching you guys up soon as the flowers start rolling in and we prepare to move the farm stand to the front of the property and see how that venture goes for us. Archer wants to say hi. Hi. <laughs> and I got a baseball bat. Archer got a baseball bat. They thrifted some bats. Hi, you got a baseball bat. The boys found baseball bats when they went to take some trash a couple of days ago. So they've been doing all sorts of fun things with those. Um, like trying to play hockey in the camper. So yeah. Anyways, um, hope everyone is well, and we will be uh, catching you guys up as the garden progresses into spring. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.